And I'd like to speak to you this morning primarily about the concept of the public interest. But first, I'll give you a little bit of context as to how a, an old accountant like me got so heavily involved in, in this particular topic. Well, it was just over 10 years ago, uh, and it was near the end of a very long career as a public-facing audit partner with PricewaterhouseCoopers, and no, I didn't have the opportunity to count the Oscar ballots. Um, I was introduced uh, to the world of audit standard setting. And while my bio has all the details, there, were, there have been three primary stops along the road. Uh, the first was as a member of the Canadian Audit and Assurance Standards Board, which I later chaired. And when that term finished, I was appointed to the International Audit and Assurance Standards Board, the IAASB. And when that term completed, uh, I was appointed to the chair that I currently, uh, the, the, the council that I currently chair, which is the Audit and Assurance Standards Oversight Council, otherwise known by the acronym of ASOC. And I'll talk a little bit more um, about ASOC in, in, in just a minute. I, 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 without question, um, it has been an honor and a privilege uh, to be involved and hold these various positions in the standard setting world. Um, but I'd also observe that it's been a really interesting period over roughly the last 10 years to observe the evolution of the standard setting process. And in particular, what I'd highlight to you has been a growing role and a growing prominence for the public oversight of standard setters. And despite a series of ongoing reforms in, in how standard setting takes place in the audit and ethics world, there has been and there continues to this day to be some lingering concerns that standard setters, in particular on the audit side of the ledger, are potentially more focused on their self-interest than they are in the public interest. Um, for those of you who follow these discussions and debates, uh, the most recent round of discussions of reform on standard setting is a consultation being carried out literally as we speak by the monitoring group. And um, Jim has made reference to the monitoring group. It's the overarching group of international regulators uh, with participants such as IOSCO, the securities regulators internationally, Basel, the banking regulators, just to mention a couple of the monitoring group members. And th they continue to address this issue. And you'll see it at the bottom of the quote, which announced their uh, consultation back in November of 2017. Notice the last phrase and its responsiveness to the public interest. Now, my fascination with the term public interest really struck me uh, when I took over as chair of ASOC. The Audit and Assurance Standards Oversight Council is a, a council that was established in the early 2000s in the post-Enron era to, to provide public oversight of audit, initially audit, but now audit and independence standards in Canada. I would note I have two colleagues in the room today that are also ASOC members, uh, Kate Buley and um, Carol Paradine, and I would also note a frequent contributor, Jeremy Justin, is here, and, and Mark has made a number of appearances with us as well. So while I don't quite have quorum here today, it's uh, <laughs> uh, tremendous to have uh, the participation of, of our council members in a, in a discussion in a conference such as Lens today. I would, I would just make two sidebars to tell you a little bit more about ASOC. Uh, first of all, there is an international equivalent to what we do. It's known, and again, Jim made reference to it, as the Public Interest Oversight Board, the PIOB. And I mention that because the, 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 the methodology we use and the approach to oversight we take at ASOC has very much been modeled on the PIOB. I would also note, and this was mentioned in Linda's presentation this morning, we have a sister council uh, here in Canada. It's called ACSOC. It's the Accounting Standards Oversight Council, which serves in a similar capacity uh, for the Accounting Standards Board and as well as the Public Sector Accounting Board as well. Now, when I first got involved in ASOC, I mean, one of the first things you do when you get asked to participate, say, well, you know, what, what do our terms of reference have to say? And you really have to read literally the first sentence of the first paragraph of the terms of reference 
and you'll see the phrase near the end uh, to safeguard the public interest. In fact, if you were to do a word search on the terms of reference of ASOC, you'll see the phrase public interest used um, seven times. Now, just to show that that isn't unique, uh, I knew, know and knew that there would be a lot of talk today of the new NOCLAR standard, uh, ethics dealing with non-compliance laws and regulations. So I did a word search on the final published standard of NOCLAR, and you will find the term public interest used 17 times. So two things I'd like to highlight to you out of that. The first is that I had noticed during the period of time that I sat at the standard setting tables, both in Canada and internationally, that the phrase public interest was being bandied about, and I use that as a, a pretty good phrase, was being bandied about by more people and more frequently and often as a means to end a debate. I developed a, a growing sympathy for the expression of concern that's on the screen that was uh, expressed by the Institute of Chartered Accountants of England and Wales, which reads uh, to the end whether um, invoking the term public interest can be used as a smokescreen to actually garner support for something that's actually in the advocates own interest. And I, I could see that in the debates that I was participating in. But secondly, if I was going to take on responsibility as chair of ASOC, I was determined that as a council that we could tell people, we could answer to what that phrase meant to us. Which started us down the initial, I would very much consider to be futile search for a definition of the public interest. You know, the short one sentence, one paragraph phrase that you could pull out or answer to if someone said, well, what does the public interest mean or that we could hold up? But it quickly became apparent to us that that one sentence or one paragraph definition would not serve us well. And in fact, uh, the more we looked at trying to craft a short definition, the more we fell in line again with a quote that comes from the Institute of Chartered Accountants of England and Wales, that such a short definition may actually lead to unintended consequences. So our council went back to scratch and looked extensively first at what others have done in trying to explain what the phrase public interest means. And believe me, lots of groups have tried this uh, or groups that we consulted in, in our exercise, as you can see by the alphabet soup of organizations that are listed on the slide. Everyone from IFAC, International Federation of Accountants, uh, the global body of uh, accountancy organizations, to our sister uh, council here in Canada that did some good work here, the Accounting Standards Oversight Council, to the uh, Institute of Chartered Accountants of England and Wales that I've referenced a couple times in my presentation this morning, to audit regulators such as the PCAOB, the Public Accounting uh, Oversight Board in the US and the Financial Reporting Council uh, in the UK. Uh, also wanted to mention that as we developed the paper that we generated, we tested our initial thoughts by a group of what I refer to as wise people. People such as a past chair of the Ontario Securities Commission, uh, the chair of the Canadian Audit Regulator, CPAB, uh, a past superintendent of the Office of the Superintendent of uh, Financial Institutions, all provided us great perspectives and, and input from where um, they sat. And after about a year's debate at ASOC, uh, we unanimously passed and subsequently published on our website a paper under the heading, What the Public Interest Means to ASOC. We address the topic in what might be seen as a suitably accounting type of way in a very linear fashion. We start by saying, well, if we're going to address public interest, first question, who are our public? Second question, what are their interests? And, and continue down that path. And ultimately, to a discussion of the judgment calls that are inherent in our oversight rule in the council we have. And if you were to look at our paper, um, I would point you to the last section in this paper under the heading of judgment call. And what really became the crux of the discussion and debate 
that took pay, place at our council. And I'll just mention that to you just to get your thoughts uh, churning. And the question was, does the application of due process by a standard setter, by due process, it would be things like publicly exposing an exposure draft, things like receiving that feedback in and appropriately considering the feedback that you get. Does the application of due process guarantee that a standard will be in the public interest? Or is there a stand back required? In other words, over and above the actual due process that's been applied, should the uh, Oversight Council or any other body stand back as well to make an assessment as whether they think the final standard or change to a standard uh, is in the public interest? And uh, I'll leave that uh, answer to that question to either Q&A or for you to look in the paper. Finally then, wh why was I so interested in wanting to tell you about the road that we followed on our Oversight Council in developing this paper on, on the public interest? As I said, it, in my observation, um, this term is being used uh, more and more frequently uh, than ever. Uh, you've already, if you've had been listening so far today, and I'll suggest later in the day, you'll hear presenters using the phrase public interest. On my drive over to Mississauga campus today, I was listening to the radio, and uh, Bob <laughs> Ray, past pr uh, provincial premier, uh, was being interviewed, and he invoked public interest <laughs> when he was commenting on the current antics of our current premier, uh, Doug Ford. But I'll, I'll leave the political discussions out of this for the moment. Um, so again, why do I want to talk about it with you folks today? Well, it is my view uh, that the topic would benefit greatly from a much more academically disciplined approach to how the terminology of the public interest has evolved and how it's being used in, in its current date. So thank you for the opportunity to speak with you and discuss this with you over the course of the morning. And I just finish with on, on this.